Hello again, welcome to another episode of the Uranium Market Minute. Today is Thursday, January 27th, and this is episode number 70. My name is Justin Hewn. I'm your host. I'm the founder and publisher of the Uranium Insider Pro Newsletter, the only investing newsletter that focuses solely on uranium and publishes on a regular monthly basis. All right. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Really do appreciate um, all of you out there. And thank you for the follows. Thank you for the views. Thank you for the comments. Um, uh, YouTube comments and Twitter comments are, have actually been a a pretty good sentiment signal signal so there's kind of a some secondary benefits to having this channel it's uh nice to see anyways uh, another volatile day out there and before we get into it as always nothing in this video is intended to be investing advice i'm not your financial advisor this is not financial advice please always do your own due diligence when it comes to investing always take responsibility for your own choices all right let's just run really through uh quickly through the daily scoreboard not really a whole lot to report here on this front spot price unmoved unchanged since yesterday in fact the past few days we continue to see decent trading in the spot market again as i explained yesterday most of this is trader churn these are pounds uh being traded back and forth between traders these are not pounds being accumulated by end users such as utilities or physical funds and trusts like spot uh, but either way high volumes happening in the spot market but the price is stable, not really getting smacked down. We've got a couple of trading days left in the month. Typically, we will see a smackdown in the price. As I've explained before, oftentimes that happens because some of the um, uh, prevalent traders in the spot market have offtake deals with producers. One example of that would be Itachu, which is a Japanese trader trading house, and they get an offtake from the Uzbeks. And so uh, their forward month pricing for their offtake pounds from that producer is dictated by the month and closing price for the spot of uranium. So oftentimes you'll see traders trickle a little pounds uh, into the market at the end of the month in order to move that price down to affect their forward month offtake. So will we see that happen? I don't know, probably. We've already seen it come down a couple of dollars, even though it is up over $2 on the month year to date, but maybe we'll see a little bit of a smackdown. Either way, a couple of days left, we're not seeing much there considering the volumes that we're seeing. So overall, that's actually quite a positive thing to see the spot market relatively stable. However, as I'll show you when we uh, go into the charts, and I actually have a, an interesting chart to share with you guys, the miners are vastly decoupled from the physical metal, which in my opinion is an opportunity. Sput raised a small amount of capital yesterday, $440,000, really just a drop in the bucket for an entity such as Sprott, obviously. Um, again, reiterating, we have confirmation they are going to be included in the URA rebalance, which is happening currently. Um, we still believe that that will be somewhere in the realm of maybe around the 7% allocation. It could come in possibly lower, but um, Yellowcake has uh, over 3% allocation in URA and SPUT is more than 2x their market cap. So it would make sense that it would be higher. We'll have to see how that shakes out. Either way, uh, SPUT closed yesterday at a small discount to NAV. Minus 0.62%, judging by the market action today, that has not tightened. So they're likely not raising money again today. Uh, the treasury sits at 22.8 million. So far this year to date, they have bought 2.7 million pounds of uranium, raised $122 million. Again, they have, uh, they've raised 1.1 billion on their ATM. They have up to 3.5. Turning to the equity ETFs, again, no shares issued. From URA or URNM. Uh, I, I've already said enough about this. This this to me is such a huge sign. But again, no redemptions. The selling that we're seeing is not coming from the ETFs. Very curious. Money is flowing into these puppies. So how much, how many outstanding shares have we raised uh, between URA and URNM? Year to date, URA outstanding shares have increased by 3.5 million, URNM by 675,000 shares. These inflows, month to date, year to date, essentially, 116 million in mandated buying. So somebody asked me the other day um, on Twitter in a Twitter comment, how do you know it's not retail buying into the ETFs? Typically, retail buys these just to get a broad allocation to the sector. And well, that's an interesting point that retail, sometimes uninformed retail, will buy ETFs just to have some allocation without having to do any due diligence or much at all on individual miners, they might just say, okay, we'll take the shotgun approach. Instead of constructing our own portfolio based on our own due diligence of the individual companies, we're just going to buy the ETF simply to have exposure to this thing. And yes, that is absolutely true. But when we're talking about uh, now four weeks, over a four week period, over $100 million 
during a period where sentiment is very low. Okay, we had it bump up for a second with the Kazakhstan situation, and we had some flows come in during that moment. But overall, we're talking about over $116 million of inflows into the ETFs um, during a period where the sentiment is, is basically at rock bottom here, okay? And it's been low. It's been low throughout most of the month of December, especially that month end smash that we had from uh, URA's dividend and URNM's uh, tax redistribution, essentially, that acted as a dividend. Um, the sentiment has been very, very low. And so what you typically don't see is retail piling in to something when the sentiment is this low, even though a lot of us may, might want to consider ourselves as contrarians, and I definitely do. Um, you know that isn't what the majority of retail does. Retail will always sell the bottoms and buy the tops. We're seeing that again today, and so so that isn't, in my opinion, retail money flowing into the ETFs. That's money coming from elsewhere. So um, 116 million year to date. So yeah, this selling is not coming uh, from the ETFs. That's very interesting. Uh, so the selling is coming from individual holdings while money comes into the ETFs. My opinion, that's probably smart money, purchasing these highly liquid vehicles to uh, gain exposure or add exposure to this sector during, uh, during a time when, when they're getting a 40 to 45% discount from the highs in November, while the fundamentals have improved since that point. Very smart. Um, so the trading action yesterday was, uh, looked like it was starting to stabilize coming off the FOMC, but of course, oftentimes that initial move is not the move that sticks. So now we're seeing, uh, the broad markets opened up this morning, then they've sold off throughout the day. And of course, uranium having, uh, outsized beta, we're seeing, uh, you know, the uranium stocks sell off quite a bit today again. And I'm going to show you a really interesting chart relative to what I'm seeing in terms of the miners versus the physical. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at the charts at this point. Starting off with URA, a uh, pretty nasty day in the market for URA, down almost 3%, 2.85%. Um, I wanted to show you a couple of trend lines that I'm looking at here. Um, I pulled the moving averages off just to make this a little bit more clear, though obviously um, moving averages are not looking pretty here. We've lost the 200 day, which is not good. The 50 day is moving down quite sharply and uh, we're approaching we're approaching a uh, what you would call a death cross, a bearish cross, the 50-day crossing steeply below the 200-day, um, especially if the 200-day is moving down. So overall, this chart is not looking pretty. But I did want to highlight a couple of things and then show some histor historical perspective here. Um, so basically, this trend line that was resistance in the early part of 2020, uh, Q2 of 2020, became support in January, became support in August. So far has barely been support and we're hanging onto that by a thread. We'll see if that holds. Not a whole lot of strength to be found in this market right now. Besides that, this trend line that was resistance in January became support in March, became support in August, a similar support point um, is an absolute line in the sand in my opinion. If we lose this upper trend line, another 15% down brings us to that 17 to 1725 level where in my opinion, we absolutely have to hold. Um, ideally, we make a higher low considering everything that has happened since August. Uh, Sput's arrival of their ATM, the purchasing of uh, you know, 27 million pounds of uranium, the price of uranium going from the low 30s to the mid 40s. Uh, you know, this is so decoupled from the physical metal. I'm gonna share with you another chart in just a moment to show that. Um, but either way, these are the trend lines I'm watching now. If we do lose this, then in my opinion, anywhere in between these two points is going to be an absolute must accumulation zone for that to hold. So, but I wanted to share with you some historical perspective because I get a lot of questions and comments that, um, you know, having to do with trading psychology and asking how I can be so calm during moments like this, where we're at 45%, you know, correction off of the highs in November. And so if we go back to 2018, uh, this was two years of essentially a, a almost perfectly consistent downtrend. Now, I started buying uranium stocks in 2017. I first heard about the thesis in 2016. I started um, you know, increasing my knowledge on the thesis and was very excited about the potential gains, obviously based on the previous bull market, but um, just kind of the the, the bright future for nuclear, the essential nature of nuclear currently, 
and you know the commodity trading at a quarter of what it needs to for production and that was back then and so we had these blips you know these these moves that were pretty strong these seasonal moves right so this is you know the, the later part of the year these are the types of seasonal moves that create those seasonal averages that we've seen before where average on average you do see seasonality in the later part of every year but it doesn't always happen every year that's just an average and most of that has to do with utility buying okay and so that's why i in my opinion why we didn't really see it this year is the utilities are mostly out of the spot market um, you know, they're, they're, the interest is growing for long-term contracts, but for now they're relatively covered in the short, short term, either way, uh, coming to this thing in 2016, starting to accumulate stocks slowly in 2017. Then we have 2018 to 2020, two years of a downtrend. Keep in mind, this is when the broad market is moving up. This is when fundamentals are looking strong. And this was, this was a, a contrarian play to end all contrarian plays. This was absolutely unloved by investors, and that is when we were accumulating. So I want to zoom in and kind of make a finer point on this and compare that to what's happening right now. So at this point, you know, I continued to dollar cost average all throughout these couple of years and got to a point in, and I remember this very clearly in January of 2020, where we just started to have kind of the initial sort of COVID concerns come in. Um, come into the markets and the broad market really started to kick, kick off more in late February. But in January, this was a continued sort of consolidation sideways, slightly down. Then we had the URA rebalance in late January and most of the equities in the space got badly hurt by that rebalance because we had major share redemptions and we're not having that now, right? But either way, we knew this was why a number of our individual holdings of, of miners were being sold off was because of this URA rebalance. It had nothing else to do with anything fundamental. URA was selling, it was hurting the stocks and we were buying. I was buying heavily in January, okay? I tapered off a bit in February because of the, of the broader uh, concerns due to COVID. And obviously we had this crash, right? So we had a total portfolio loss on paper, keep in mind, of about 50%. It was maybe 40 to 50% going from January to March, okay, for the course of two months, the, the paper losses were January to March. Now, did that accumulation in January look intelligent in March? No, it did not. Um, did I have some cash to deploy in March? Yes, I did. I wish I would have waited. Of course, hindsight is always 2020. However, how did those January positions look a year later, a year and a half later? Okay, hindsight is always so clear and short term steep declines due to either broad market influences, risk off environments, uh, you know, URA, you know, ETF rebalancing, you know, concerns about uh, conflict in Ukraine, et cetera, et cetera, all of these elements that are relevant. Of course they're relevant. And of course they, they have their effects on the markets, but for a long-term fundamental view of this market, it's important to keep your eye on the prize for the long term. Now that's not to say that you shouldn't uh, be cautious or that you shouldn't enter into your positions in multiple tranches. I've repeated that over and over, especially to members. Um, but because moments like this do come, I mean, look how often we're seeing corrections in this market. Uh, it's like every six or eight months, you have a, a chunky correction. And that's that's not a, a unprecedented thing historically. So you just have to keep the long-term prize in mind anytime you're seeing markets like this, which are weaker beyond what anyone did expect all right so we go to weekly charts we zoom out we have a long long ways to go here and this is a big pullback that in our opinion obviously is unjustified from a fundamental perspective but from a technical technical perspective these stocks are breaking down now i want to share um another chart that i think is really interesting and really relevant here so let me let me share my screen share a different screen here All right, so this this is a this is the chart showing a comparison between URNM, which is the largest pure play ETF in the uranium space, and SRUUF, which is the U.S. ticker on the OTC markets for the Sprott Physical Uranium Trust. Essentially, what this chart is showing is a uh, comparison, a relative snapshot of the strength of the miners held in URNM 
relative to the metal spot physical uranium trust. Now, of course, SPUT will trade at a premium and a discount to NAV, but for the most part, it tracks the price of the commodity. What are we looking at here? Since November, which is at the peak, right? When the equities were vastly outperforming the metal. Look at the underperformance of the equities versus the metal. In fact, we are now Dow down to the low point uh, in, this relative, in this relativity from the September pullback and the August pullback, which was the biggest pullback of the year um, for uranium equities. And of course, I can't go back further with this because this is US equities only. Um, so I can't track U.UN, which would incorporate UPC in the historical charts. But either way, this at least gives us almost a year's perspective, uh, actually about eight months perspective with this. And judging by those two low points, both August and September, those were both, in hindsight, excellent points to be accumulating shares of the miners relative to the metal. The metal is stable here. Other factors are influencing the selling. So in my opinion, that is an opportunity. Now, the, the mailbag section was just asking for some details on the URA rebalance. So I'll just quickly run through that. Basically, every uh, twice a year, URA and URNM will rebalance. And what they do is they, um, they consider new entrants into the ETF and they consider holdings that they're going to purge from the ETF. So in this time, they're adding eight new entrants into their holdings, URA. They're purging two of them. They're purging Greenland Minerals and they're purging BHP. You know, those two sales, BHP and Greenland, especially BHP, does help um, move their cash balance and reduce the amount of selling that they will have to do of the remaining underlying holdings that they will still hold, but they have to make room for these new entrants, especially for SPUT, which is going to have a reasonable size percentage holding in the ETF. So that's what happens. They do that every six months, so late January into early February, and then late July into early August. And that is uh, every year that will continue to happen. It's something to keep in mind every time it happens. And you know that there will be selling liquidity coming into the market, depending on the overall strength of the uranium market. That determines how much it affects those holdings. But obviously, any time like this, when the sentiment is basically at the bottom of the barrel, when we have um, a, a, an overall sort of risk off environment in terms of investing flows, and you have that uh, rebalance happening, then you see what you see on the screen. It's red and the volumes are decent. And so if you are just arriving to the sector or you're adding to the tranches, then you know that that uh, rebalance can add some liquidity in terms of um, selling volume for your purchasing, okay? So that's what we're looking at. Um, all right, that's, that's gonna be it for today. We will see how these things do. I would like to see those trend lines hold for both URA and URNM similar. Um, but not looking pretty out there. And, uh, but I just wanted to share that, that chart with you relative, the uh, miners relative to the metal, because oftentimes you'll see that, that that point where you have the stocks of the miners um, completely uh, pulled off and pulled away from the trading of the metal, that's an opportunity to buy. And of course, when it goes in the other, other direction, as you could see by that chart that I shared, that was a time to sell or trim. All right. I uh, hope everybody's doing well and we will see you tomorrow. Cheers.